Hi, I'm Roy Murphy. You're watching the BitConnect YouTube channel. Coming up in today's video, BitConnect changes and updates. Hello everyone, I'm Roy Murphy. Welcome back to the BitConnect YouTube channel. I haven't died. I am still here. I know I've been away for about five days. I do apologize. We've had lots of people actually uh, send me email messages and comments on YouTube saying, have you died? Are you not supporting BitConnect anymore? No, I've just been really, really busy um, organizing stuff. That's uh, a lot of stuff which is going on underneath the hood, both with the channel and with BitConnect. So um, more information on that will be coming very, very soon. So it's all good news and it's all progress. So um, I wanted to answer today some of the general queries I've been hearing whilst I've been away. So if you've been wondering where I've been, I have not stopped for the last five days. So I spent two days at the uh, blockchain summit in London. So I've been away there. That was 20 hours a day for two days solid. Um, if you include all the parties and all the networking and everything. So that was just an epic time. I've been watching lots of the videos from the uh, blockchain expo in San Francisco, which also looked amazing. Uh, I've been speaking with a lot of the guys involved in that and um, loads of the feedback has been really, really great. I've seen some of the videos. It looked really, really good. From our perspective, I was there uh, obviously supporting Amazon for AWS and looking at some of the changes that will be coming into effect in spring of next year of 2018. And this regards to Amazon actually going over to introducing Bitcoin payments, which is a massive thing for the industry. So what I wanted to do is start today by talking about some of the biggest things that you've been talking about over the last five days. So I want to cover some of those now. One is the uh, the price of BCC. Uh, some people didn't understand how the relationship, which has always been kind of tracing, shadowing, call it what you will, linked to following the price of Bitcoin. Uh, we want to go through the reasons why this has changed and why it's bouncing back. So it's now bounced back. It's uh, hovering around $320 all day today. And I do expect this to actually consolidate and out accelerate uh, Bitcoin over the next two or three days. And I'll tell you the reasons why in a moment. The other thing as well is talking about the flow on the exchange in BitConnect the flow of buy orders and sell orders. So I want to cover both of those now and then I'll be telling you a little bit more about what I've been doing for the last week. So um, over the last week, I've had the flu pretty bad. When I say pretty bad, I mean man flu. I mean, nothing is worse than man flu. I actually lost my voice for two days, which isn't conducive to making uh, videos when you're talking on audio only. Some other updates as well. Talking about audio only, we will start be doing and producing videos with pieces to camera directly. Um, and the reason why we don't do that at the moment is that we don't have all the gear, but I have ordered everything to do it with uh, proper green screens. We've got some proper cameras and recording equipment. I've spoken to a few friends, so we have been networking. We have been talking to the community who have been amazing this last week. So we've got green screen stuff coming. We've got a studio set up coming so we can do live pieces to camera. We want to raise the quality of the videos that we're producing. I want to tell you a little bit about some of the support we've had from the community, people who have just come out from the middle of nowhere to help either with the channel, uh, team members via the team who want to actually help as administrators for what we're going to be doing for next year. So there's loads of really great stuff. This It's a really, really busy time of the year for the industry, um, for BitConnect and for Team Smurf. So we want to give you a little idea about what's coming up soon, and some of the changes and some of the improvements that we are going to be doing. So first of all, let's cover the trading issue. So I've got some money. I've just pulled some over now. It's just popped up as I've refreshed. There's another 122 in there. But for uh, demonstration purposes, we're going to move this BitConnect into Bitcoin. So we're going to go and move some. So we're going to go over to the exchange. And this probably isn't the best time to do it. So in the UK here, it's now early Sunday morning. So it's Saturday night in the Western world. And you can see that you've got the buy orders on the left, which is converting BitConnect coins or lens from BitConnect into BCC. And then we've also got the sell orders where people are either converting from their lending wallets into BCC and then BCC into BTC. So this is BitConnect into Bitcoin. So they're either bringing it over for two different reasons. If you think about it, what are the two reasons that people would be buying Bitcoin on the exchange. If they're on the exchange, it means they've got money already in BitConnect. 
that's the obvious one, number one, because 95% um, of all transactions in BitConnect actually happen on this exchange. It's that high for a reason, and the reason is is that everything can be done under one platform, which is why it's a lending platform and it's an exchange platform. And then you've got the staking and the lending and the moving of money in and out. It's kept intrinsic into the system because there are fees, and those fees go to generate more money for BitConnect. Okay. So there's lots of FUD going on in the Twitter sphere at the moment. Um, mine's gone crazy. I've had to block so many people. There are actually people out there. There's one guy who's called on his Twitter handle is BCC Ponzi, and he's an absolute. I can't say it. He's just driving me crazy. I've actually deleted him. But you have these people out there who are just screaming Ponzi, screaming FUD, screaming fear, uncertainty, and doubt into everything and everything we do. And everything seems to be misguided. Everything seems to be just completely wrong. And most of these people have never actually used the system. So for those of you who are concerned and are concerned about this figure and are concerned about the fact that the sell orders have gone sky high and the, and the buy orders have dropped right down, I want to explain the reasons um, of why that happens. Now, if we go over to Bitcoin, you will notice that the markets, first of all, want to talk about the actual market cap in total. So last week, a market cap went from 302 billion to 356 billion in one day. Okay, now the reasons for that is there are lots of exchanges that are now adopting um, cryptocurrency. And the fact that a lot of these exchanges have all opened up and have all cottoned on and are all starting to trade crypto, there are some certain patterns um, coming through, especially weekdays. Um, you will see that lots of the altcoins are dropping drastically on a Wednesday and a Thursday now. You will see lots of consolidation happening Thursday night, Friday morning. Um, and then you will see uh, organic growth on a Saturday and a Sunday. And then you will see the consolidation Monday morning when everyone logs back in again and everything kind of balances out again. So you see that these market cap swings now over the last couple of weeks have been in the $50 billion mark per day. So when we had a really big increase, when we had the first big jump from 7000 above $10,000 in Bitcoin, in one day there was $50 billion dropped on the total market cap of all altcoins in the history of time. And that what that represents is one seventh, one seventh of all the money in cryptocurrency over the last nine years was dropped into the system in one day. That is a huge velocity of money coming into the system. And it was, didn't all go into Bitcoin. It went into Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash. You've seen the peaks and troughs of Bitcoin Cash over the last month. Uh, Dash Litecoin have been massively swinging up, swinging down. Bitcoin Gold as well, that's also increased the cap. And Bitcoin Diamond and all these other different forks. People are trying to make sense of it. So for that reason, if you go back to our, um, to our live orders and our selling orders, when this figure goes up drastically, and it's kind of artificially high because of these numbers are unprecedented. Um, even day before yesterday, it went from um, it went from seven thousand over seventy hours. It went from uh, seven thousand something to eleven thousand eight hundred, down to nine thousand seven, and back up to eleven two in one day. And it's been hovering between ten eight and uh, eleven two for the last twenty four hours. So it's starting to consolidate this figure here now. But you notice that during that time, that BitConnect actually stayed steady. It went between 280 and 300 and never really broke that $300 mark. And people were drawing these correlations between the two, so it's saying, you know, this organic growth, BitConnect has always kind of tracked and kind of out accelerated whatever Bitcoin's doing, and it's not doing that anymore. So you'll also notice that historically there have always been more buy orders in this area here and less sell orders over here. And the reasons why is this, it's to do with velocity. If I was to sell money now, there's very, very little flashing going on here, which means that the market on this particular time at the weekend is actually quite slow. But when this was going crazy and it was going up to $11,000, this was flashing like crazy. So let's do a traditional buy order. So let's refresh the page. So we get the latest figures. 
So I've got roughly half a BitConnect uh, to exchange. So we're going to go over to the exchange now and I'm going to go and do a sell. Okay, so I'm going to do a sell order. I'm going to sell everything. I'm going to do what everyone does, goes to the last price because that is the last one that will be picked up and we'll go sell BitConnect coin. Okay, sell order placed. And what was the figure? So you can see because this figure here is now growing, my sell order did not even hit the open orders. It instantly got gobbled up. And it got gobbled up because the last price, these prices here, are going up and up and up. So if you have, say this one here, uh, ending 6299, was in the hold orders, when you add to your last order, it adds to these figures here. That was just 37 and that's just popped up to 0 0.9. So that 37 BitConnect coins was just gobbled up instantly and it's now down here. Okay, so you need to know how the backing order works. When there is enough velocity, it takes the highest price over here, and then when this one finishes, it goes to the next one. So if someone puts this highest price, it gets added to this figure here. So this 37 will go up to 50, then 60, then 70, then 80. This is what happens when we're looking at velocities of, of uh, buy orders and sell orders. So when this figure goes up, the ratio very, very quickly between Bitcoin and BitConnect coin goes down. And what we're trading here is the ratio, the ask is the ratio of BitConnect coin to Bitcoin. So as the ratio goes down, these back orders start backing up. If you put in, uh, if you went in three or four days ago and you saw that when you actually place an order and it goes into the system and it starts to be uh, there as a sell order, you will see that this icon here shows you where your order is. And for about a week, your order would be here and literally within seconds it would start dropping down, dropping down, dropping down. And you will see lower figure orders going up because as the figure was dropping, as the relationship and the ratio was dropping, the sell orders were backing up. So you'd have to actually cancel it and then do the last order again, go up to here and go last and then figure out what the new figure was and then go sell bit connect coin. And then you just see your order just drop down the list. And that's because the ratio up here was dropping. And the reverse was happening here. You've got the lowest orders here going up to the highest orders as a relationship. So obviously the, the lower the ratio, the higher the number in terms of selling BitConnect to uh, Bitcoin. So it takes the lowest order first. So as this ratio was dropping, all of these back orders were being eaten up really, really quickly. This one and this one and this one and this one. So the portfolio of back orders here was dropping and the portfolio here was gaining very, very quickly. So this completely accelerated this side and the disparity between the buy orders and the sell orders grew. Now that was just an organic thing that happens when you have a whole piss, a, a whole, a whole piss, a whole list of um, of sell orders and buy orders within the system. So that kind of explains what what happens there, and you can see the volatility. Um, you know, if we go over for the last two weeks, you can see historically how the value, the ratio, that even though the value was stable, the the ratio between Bitcoin went down and down and down. It's consolidated here about a day and a half ago and now it's just starting to pick up. Okay, so this is the sign of consolidation and over the next few days recovery. So the ratio here, I expect to go up to 330, 340 and it will carry on going, doing the thing that it always did before. So it was a temporary blip and it's in reaction to the market. So when you put $50 billion worth of uh, money into the system, the velocity of the system outside of the intrinsic system out accelerates and this drops. But long term, it always goes up, so don't worry. Okay. What else can we talk about? So, um, oh yeah, let's do that. Uh, so let's quickly go on to here so you can see now that Bitcoin went straight into there and I can now send that uh, directly into, um, into my account here and that will be added to my portfolio. So there you go. You can see how I've, um, I've moved money. Oh, also, whilst we're here, let's talk about the exchange. There's a new feature in Exodus. Uh, you've got order history and you can see how your most recent ones have outperformed. So EOS at the moment has been doing fantastic. I put this in early on this morning. It's already made 25%. If we go back in history, my EOS here on the 29th of November has made 49%. If we go back in time and look at some more trades with EOS, 
144% on the 16th of November. So EOS has been pretty good to me. There you go, 70 EOS on the 11th of November has made nearly 300%. There you go, in three weeks. That's pretty good going. So yeah, EOS has been very kind to me, um, which is why my, my figures have, have gone up drastically with the increases in Bitcoin Cash and Civic and Bitcoin, Augur and Funfair as well. So we can get rid of that now. Um, so yes, what have I been doing for the last five days whilst I've not been making videos? So I have been, like I said, I was I spent two days in London I'm a three hour drive from London, so I'd stay in London at a hotel for two days. That was a, that was two days of the blockchain uh, summit in London. And then I ended up having meetings in Malaysia, so I had to fly out to Malaysia. And then I had to fly for another meeting in Dubai. Then I had to fly back and then catch up with all of my work, all of my emails. So some of the other changes that are going on behind the scenes are to do with the under the hood changes that we are making now. Uh, as a channel, uh, the changes that are happening in the Murphy household here and also the, the way that we are now integrating into our team and the way that we're communicating. Now we are preparing for everything that's going to be happening in 2018. Now from all the people I spoke to at the Blockchain uh, Summit, it's amazing what is going on in the ecosystem. And I think that 2018 will be the best year we've ever had. And we need to start preparing. I can no longer scale what I do on a daily basis. So this is why we are now investing in proper recording equipment. We're, we're investing in uh, green screens. Um, I have a friend who lives locally to me who is a video producer. He'll be working with me full time to help me produce the videos. So all I'm going to be doing is recording the videos and he will be editing them in a much more professional way than I'm doing now. So it'll be uh, pieces to camera. You'll actually see my face for the, uh, finally. Um, we need to step up our game. So let's just show you what the issues have been. Um, let's get rid of the cryptocurrency charts. And let's go to, um, let's go to my inbox. So this is, this is just since I've been recording. These are my inbound box. And you can see the amount of emails that I will get on a daily basis. And I'm getting 500 to 1,000 emails every day. And this is just my inbox. This is filtering out all, everything that isn't related to BitConnect or Bitcoin. All of these are BitConnect related. And you can see here, this is just the history of every single email that I've responded to. Now, some of these are team members. Some of these aren't team members. So this is just one box. And this is just the last few days. Okay. So I have to respond to these all day. And this now takes up 10 hours of my day every single day. And if we're going to grow this channel, I can't scale myself any more than I am now. I can't answer any more. I mean, this one here, this box, this is just the inbox for anyone that actually pays attention to the, um, to the description under every single video. It does say, say the word BitConnect in your header. And if you say that, it goes into this box. So this is my box from today. And this are also, this is my inbox that's just related to BitConnect. And these aren't even members of my team. So if I go into the team members, if I go into the BitConnect area, you can see that uh, just people that request in calculators, these are all the different people that I've actually put through. We've got uh, general people, we've got the people within the team. And inside all of these, there are, you know, there are different communications just with one person. You know, this, this is someone that's not even in my team and they ask questions and we respond to every single question. So to be able to scale out, this is no longer working for me. If we go back to YouTube and we go to the comments, now I'm fully up to date with all my comments, but if I go to my channel or I go to community and I can see the, the historic comments, I can now see that I have loads of comments that are unanswered and I will answer all of these every single day. But I'm just one person. And if you go back to the historic ones, you can see that every single question, when I read it, I tick it, I give it a like, just to say, yes, I'm aware of your question. I may not re respond, but most of the time I do. I will always, always respond to your questions. For one person to do this, you can see here, you stop making videos. No, I'm still here. So uh, no, I've been in London for two days at the Blockchain Summit, then Dubai in a meeting, then to Malaysia for more meetings. 
and now back home. I'm working on scaling the channel as a thousand emails and 500 YouTube comments every day is eating up my life. I have to think smarter to scale things up for the next level. So that's what I'm working on. New video soon. So that's the video we're working on now. And I've got another one to cover this beastly thing over here called ETH Connect. We have made another channel for it and it has been a pain. Um, it's just not going very well for many, many reasons. I don't even want to cover it on this channel. Um, I'm going to make another video immediately after I finish making this one because I've had loads of comments uh, about ETH Connect and the problems that they're having. But you can see every single comment, every single day, I get, um, you know, I answer everything. So in order to keep that up, in order to keep the quality up, um, you can see, look, even in the last 10 minutes, I've got videos for review. Okay. And the reason why it's for review is using these keywords that I've set, that, that the word scammed. I already know that this is trash, so delete. Um, so this here, again, they're promoting a different gold site from Mint Builder, delete. So this one here, let's have a little read here. So there's a comment here. Now this is actually someone actually giving a feedback to someone else. Um, so this one I can approve and I will actually respond to that later. And then we've got all our spam comments in here. And everything with a referral link, everything with a referral link on YouTube, who isn't someone under me within the system, automatically gets deleted. So if we go back, you can see um, all these referral links. Now this is what I spend all day doing, and I literally must do a thousand of these a day. Okay, so I delete all of these comments that show up in my spam ultra review. And then I will go through the system as well. So this is something that I do all day, every day. It's not once or twice, it's constantly all day. So I need to be able to step up. So we can't do that and we can't do that anymore efficiently. So in order to be efficient, we've been busy behind the scenes making, um, making changes. So we said that for our team that we are going to be introducing a new uh, channel. Now it's not a new YouTube channel, it's a new channel directly for BitConnect. And that BitConnect channel will be linked to a website where we can do all these things that we've been planning, but we can do everything much more efficiently. Now we've been gaining administrators from within the BitConnect community to be able to help us. And that's what we are doing behind the scenes. Now that was originally going to happen for all the members of Team Smurf. Now what we've done, we've created two different servers to help two different channels. I'd love to show you right now, but uh, some of the frequently asked questions section and some of the help guides and tutorials and videos that we're going to be adding to this new system aren't yet in. So I will be working over that when I'm not answering emails. Um, I will be uh, looking at that um, and adding everybody um, who is in Team Smurf to that system. So we'll, we'll be doing a video over the next few days about how that works. And we did say that we would be doing all these uh, calculator apps and all these different live stats and everything. Uh, we were going to be doing that in the new year. I can't wait now till the new year. So I brought it forward. We will be launching that on the 7th of December. So if you look now at my videos, you will see that everybody has free and open access to my email address. So if I go through to the email addresses, uh, you can see if I go down here, you can see that everyone can see that my email address, RoyMurphyAtLive.com, is featured in the bottom, which is why I get so many uh, emails. So the emails aren't working anymore. So we're going to go over to a new system. So over the next few days, I will be editing every single video. I'll be editing every single link and I'll be removing my email address between now and the 7th of December. Not because I don't want to speak to you, but because I need to be more efficient and I need to get the team, all those administrators, to be able to answer all of those questions 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So uh, this is something that we're setting up. Also as well, we had a guy, um, his name was Jacob Ramos. Uh, I, I need to give him a shout out. He did mention that, love the videos, love the information, but this horrible orange screen Bearing in mind that yeah, I've been a developer for a long time, but uh, design is not my forte. Um, my brother inherited those genes. Um, I want to show you some of this stuff, actually. So um, if I get rid of this, um, he made this for me. So if I go through here, I will actually be editing all of my historic uh, 
uh, pictures and he's made some new splash screens for me. So this is someone who just appreciates the channel and someone saying, look, I've made this for you. This is a little bit better uh, than what you're doing. How about using this in your videos? Something that's a little bit more uh, clean. And I agree, we, we need to step up our game. So this is what we're doing. So there's lots of stuff going on in the background to be able to um, raise the quality of the channel. So we are going to be doing green screen. We are going to be doing pieces to camera face to face. Um, we are going to have proper um, videos edited um, you know, where I'm not just ad-libbing to camera, where we're actually planning our day, planning what we're doing, um, and having a proper editor edit, edit the videos, edit the audio, and make me look beautiful in front of a lovely background, which will all be BitConnect related. So, um, yeah, loads of stuff going on in the background um, with uh, help from the community as well. So, um, talking of community members, lots of our guys have also signed up to Mint Builder. So we've got a uh, we've got 90 people in our downline now, and a few people have asked how they actually uh, place people uh, below them. So I've now managed to place everybody within the team. So if I go to my team and I show you my binary tree, um, you can see how many people. It's actually so wide it doesn't fit on one screen. So you can see that I'm at the top of the tree here, and you can see the people that are below me. Uh, and I've actually placed everybody within their own teams, within their own trees. So what I've done is these people here, I've actually placed different members underneath. And when they're auto ship ship, um, they will actually get the benefits. So I've actually, rather than put everybody under me, I've actually created a proper pyramid um, so that different people um, can, can benefit from those b below them actually making their auto ship. So it gives you an income. Uh, so those early adopters, so I've placed everyone the highest where I've had the most um, the, the most leverage with, where I've had the most communication, I've had the most questions, and where they've actually told me what they are doing with their system. So those that are actually using it um, and promoting it uh, are at the top, and then uh, I've placed everybody below that. So um, I've got one being held now, and I can see that this guy here, um, Sergey hasn't had uh, anyone in his right hand stream so I'm going to show you how to add someone into a placement so what you'd normally do at the top of the tree is is you'd add your number and then you place someone to the left and right of you and then you need to place someone to the left and right of them so you need these different numbers uh, here to place someone within your binary tree so if we go back to the back office, so Mint Builder is now completely live. Um, I'll show you the, the new setup, um, but the, um, the trading area is now, is now open, the buying area and the store is now open. But if you want to place, you can actually see people that are in placement here in your, in your area here. So if I go to my team and I go to my uh, binary tree two, you can see that I'm at the top. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to um, go down and add someone under him. And then we need to go to uh, Sergey, who is missing someone, uh, I believe, on the right-hand side. So I need to put someone on the right-hand side of this guy here. So I need to take his number and I need to put someone under his, his reference in leg two on the right-hand side. Okay, so I'll show you how I'm going to do that now. So we've got someone waiting. Uh, for placement, so we've got placement hold here. So I want to place them, so I need to go to edit. And I need to go place them on the right hand side of Sergey, whose number is that ID. So that's what the placement ID is for. Lots of people have been asking me, where do I get my placement IDs? You start your pyramid uh, from your number and then you add the people under them with their placement IDs. Okay, so that's how you do that. So that is the mintbuilder.com. Uh, if I go to the business side and I show you the replicated site and show you my website, you can now see that everything is now live. Okay, so you can now buy mint coins, you can uh, you can now buy bullion, you can you can exchange from Bitcoin, and it shows you the opportunities there. Um, so yeah, that's now live. The link will be below this video if um, if you haven't signed up already. Oh, we've also uh, added the extend. We've also extended the um, the lifetime membership date, which should have finished uh, day before yesterday. We've extended it till the seventh of December. So if you're not in Mint Builder yet and you want to be able to use Bitcoin, buy, trade, and sell gold coins, silver, bullion, 
if that interests you the link is below here and, you, and I will add you to my team and I'll, as more people come in I will add people underneath you so you have a revenue stream you will have that passive income coming just from people joining underneath you so it's a really good opportunity now to jump on board so that is Mint Builder which is now live um, the other thing I wanted to cover here another question that I've had over the last few days is talking about the volatility payouts so if we go to Bitcoin volatility here, you will see that over these days where there was a significant amount of volatility within Bitcoin, people were saying, how come is this figure so low? Why is this so low? And I want to showcase and tell you the reasons why. So it's not a case of I'm trying to think how to put this. If I scroll out to those particular dates, you will see I've got enabled on this screen I have the uh, RSI, the relative strength index of how things are doing. So when it opened at 12 o'clock at midnight here, when the trading bot starts its new day, people look at this figure and say, look, Bitcoin went crazy. It went up and it went up and it went up and up. it did go up. Because if you look at the RSI, it went way above the limit, the 70, uh, 70 mark, and it was right at the ceiling. So when you write at the ceiling of the relative strength index, what that does is two things. One, it tells you that it's undersold, so people are buying. But what it doesn't tell you is where the cutoff point is. At any point along this line, it could drop, and the only way it can go is down, like it did here. Okay. So relative strength index, what that does, it shows you that the risk of a drop is very, very high, even though it's going up. So if you're, imagine you're a, a, a BitConnect trading bot, the most important thing isn't making money. The most important thing is consolidating the funds that you've already put in. So when you have a risk assessment here of a figure only ever being able to go down, you would put a very, very small amount of your reserves whilst it's going up. So this is showing strength. This is saying that it's undersold. So the strength means that, yeah, so if I've got, a, bear in mind, we're talking of like billions or millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. So say you put in 10% of your reserves as a risk indicator. So all you're doing at this stage, you're not, people want to see, oh, from here to here, it went up 10%. Why am I not getting 10%? Well, one, because the start and the finish didn't end at 10% throughout the day. It did do what the bot was afraid of and drop. And you never know when that drop's going to happen, but you can see it on the RSI just here as it drops down. So it's to do with the amount of money that it puts into the system based on its reserves, based on the risk. And the risk factor here is, it. yes, it was always going to go up, but where was the bounce? It's much better to actually put money in at this stage on the bounce, knowing that it's going to bounce back up again, than it is when you open for trading, your RSI is through the roof and the price is going up. So say, for instance, it put in 10% of its reserve, say it put in um, $10, $10 million worth of uh, trading bets at this point at open. It doesn't have anywhere to go when it's a smooth uptick like this. Okay, this could have been a sell point here. When it saw that the RSI dropped down, it could have sold. And then from here with the RSI being sky high still, where is it going to go? Well, all it wants to do is to consolidate from the previous day's loss. So here is a loss. You can see that the RSI dipped from the previous day. When it starts its first day, it's not how much money can I make? It's how can I consolidate from the losses I made from the day before? Bearing in mind that those losses do not get passed on to you as a user. You still get, you know, if you've put in $10,000, you still get your 0.25% per day. If you've got 100 people under you, you still get your 5% referral commission. That has to be paid for by something. So it's not just a simple matrix. It's a matrix of actually working out uh, the risk value when it's going up. Now, you can see here on the next particular day, if I scroll this way, you can see that when the day opened and day closed, it actually opened and closed very, very similar on the same line. I think the difference was actually $19 between open and close. And people said, yeah, but there's huge volatility up and huge volatility down. It doesn't matter. The RSI was saying the strength indicator is actually indicating a drop and it did drop. Okay, this is where it wants to buy. But when you've only got four hours left in the day to make these peaks, and then you're only getting, you know, it's only giving 22% of that to its users. 
because it needs to make money itself. You know, 78% of everything it makes goes back into the system. You want the system to be able to make money, otherwise it cannot sustain itself. So this is the reason um, why some days they don't make sense to those casual users or even market traders. The market traders who know markets are the worst people in the world because they're not used to the volatility of um, A, bearing in mind that they're used to spread betting. So they're used to working out spreads and um, you know they, they want to know that if their trade in the morning is going to peak and trough throughout the day and they look at the indicators and say, oh, I've made 5% sell. That is not how an algorithmic trading bot does because we're talking about many, many microtransactions throughout the day and it is automated and it has to look at the risk before it puts any money in, before it takes money out. So these are some of the complexities of the trading bot and you also find that it pays more the following day. If it's had a good day the day before but it's consolidated, it will reduce that consolidation, figure out how much it made the next day and actually assign some of that money to the next day's trading algorithm. So it's not a fixed rate. It is logarithmic in scale, so you have to understand that. I get so many, so many emails, so many me uh, messages on um, on YouTube. Um, so if anybody asks that question and nobody is giving them an answer, please point them to this video. Um, and even, you know, you don't have to watch the whole video, just watch this section. You can actually put the time uh, frame in the video if you just want them to uh, send them to this section here. And last but not least, we have the BCC Pay Card, which kind of launched but isn't ready yet <laughs> so bcc pay has launched uh, fully um, but in certain countries uh, canada usa and the uk card um, uh, registration for the plastic card at least is uh, delayed now until the 15th of december so m loads of exciting stuff to uh, to talk about loads of things that we've caught up on i think that's about it for the day i've talked too much i think and i'm out of practice i've been away for a long time so i'm gonna go and get rid of some jet lag i'm gonna go and have myself coffee i'm gonna wake myself up have a lem sip and i'll be back uh, ready to roll in the next video i'm roy murphy we'll see you soon take care this video was brought to you by team smurf we bring you new videos each and every day to join our team click the referral link below this video don't forget to like and subscribe and interact with us in the comments box below but connect creating wealth for everyone